Well, this is James Com, the guy on the bike, but I'm not on my bike today because it's a real crappy day. We're welcoming you back for another half ass production. And today we're going to run in and take a look at the first major museum exhibition by Ernst Fisher. Stay tuned. Massimiliano. Uh, the first Gioni. Time, um, that uh, he's given so much space and so much, I think, resources. Uh, Urs has played with the sublime. I think he has invented a sort of contemporary version, maybe a, a rotten version of the sublime. And, uh, um, and so space was the point from which we felt uh, we needed to start. Um, in fact, all the work of Urs Fischer deals with space and deals with the way in which things uh, inhabit space. If I were to use a, a, a unknowingly intellectual word, I would say that his work is about ontology. It's about being in space and being in reality as if uh, um, it could be transformed with Photoshop. I think all through the show you will encounter many moments in which your perception is questioned and in which you don't know uh, whether you want to um, believe your senses and whether materials are actually uh, what they see. So I think that's all. Enjoy and thank you so much. Uh, to this point, the new museum has not disclosed the cost of uh, this exhibition. And uh, with the new uh, environment, uh, with the uh, president's uh, policy towards uh, transparency, don't you think the new museum would be uh, setting a good example if it could sort of uh, increase its transparency? And also, uh, having the uh, history of uh, institutional critique that you have, don't you think that by not disclosing this information that you're also uh, basically censoring a, an important aspect of the uh, aesthetic content of the show? Uh, well, we never disclose prices for any show, so I don't know why you should do it for this. You didn't ask this question when we had David Goldblatt, so I think... I wasn't here for that one. Well, but <laughs> I think we never revealed, simply because, in fact, I think we've gone through a decade of people that only spoke about prices and cost, and uh, if there is one good story coming out of uh, a recession is that maybe people are less obsessed with price tag and more interested in art, and uh, I think... So you're not going to disclose the cost? I'm not going to disclose the cost. Okay, thank you. We care about art. No, I think, you know, again, to, to use the example of Bruce Fisher, what his work proves um, is that things can be accomplished not just through money, but through participation of many committed individuals. And I think that's uh, what we really care about. And uh, because of our history of institutional critique, I think our responsibility is to Push to the institution. institution. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is the fourth floor. And we've really got the, uh, the cream of the New York art world coming to center here. There's Patty Johnson. Uh, Ernest Fisher is a young Swiss artist. I think he's about 36 years old. These all look like cast aluminum, and I would say that they're probably roughly about uh, 10 to 12 feet by 8 to 10 feet wide. This hanging piece, this is pretty nice. You actually see it swaying a little bit. This is a fun piece, and it uh, kind of puts me in mind of the uh, Martin Kippenberger drunk lamppost piece, although he's got a more uh, Victorian version of it here. It's another huge piece. Oh, you can see the seams in here. Oh, this is fun. This is really dealing with trompe l'oeil. It's like a little section of a subway seat with a bag and a uh, little cake. And beautifully painted. So this is the fourth floor. Oh, 
out. Now we're coming out on the third floor. And I believe this is the, the gallery that they came in and lowered the ceiling two feet. Basically reproduced the same ceiling with the same light fixtures and fire sprinklers. A lot of this is all done with uh, photo prints and we were discussing whether or not all these shadows are real or whether this is some of the very subtle trompe l'oeil effects that uh, Earth was going for. Barry Hoggard pointed out that this little space right here is where you can see the gap between the real ceiling and the faux ceiling. So that gives you an idea of the space between them. This piece is titled Nozette 2009. Let's see if we can get this to activate. Oh, maybe not. It's hard to get coax it out. Well, you have to let it reset. Okay, try it now. Uh oh! This is nice. We've got a soft piano. This piece is untitled. It's cast aluminum. Oh. And then we've got a false door handle. We've got some false fixtures there. It does make you question your perceptions and how much you're aware of the, the spaces that you inhabit. It's due to the fragile nature of this work, they're not allowing strollers in the galleries. And I believe these are all stainless steel boxes with silkscreen prints photo silk screen prints on them. I think this is a uh, great example of what I've noticed lately, which is <laughs> shiny art. In a lot of ways, this is also about the fetishistic aspects of contemporary marketing. Um, technology of creating desire is shiny surfaces <laughs> seem to be a very attractive attractive device someone else was also saying that they thought this looked a little too too commercial a little too market ready and of course I think there's also a relationship to Hal Soldenberg and his blown up pop art objects. And now we're talking to Patty Johnson who has one of the most uh, influential art blogs in the world, Art Fag City. <laughs> All right, give us a, a quick uh, interpretation of the show. I don't know, the second floor, which is where we are now, looks like um, it's, it's sort of, um, looks like a furniture warehouse and it's like a collection of stuff that um, Urs Fisher perhaps thinks is cool. So it's got like a real like downtown hipster vibe. There's like, I really responded to cupcakes and I feel that that makes me a cupcake lover and a hipster. Um, okay. But uh, what does that mean? I, I don't know yet. I mean, Would you like that in your living room? Uh, probably not, no. Um, I don't know whether that qualifies it, you know, it's, whether that's an evaluation of the art or no. not though. It's, okay. Um, I mean, I think it would just get too many uh, fingerprints on it. That, that's a good aspect you have to bring up. Okay, thank you, Patty. Anytime. Right. And we'll stay in touch with you at Art Fag City, right? Please do. Thanks. So this is James Calm coming to you from Oris Fisher and Margarita Del Ponte. His first museum exhibition here at the new museum on the Bowery. Thanks, Kate.